Good evening. We're live here at New Covenant University. This is Dr. Paul Kreitz, and we're really glad that you have joined us. And tonight our class is on strategic planning. This is the master's degree class on strategic planning. Glad to have you join us. We're going to be talking tonight about strategic planning. That course number, Dr. Angel, is LDR 526. LDR 526. So if you're jotting down some notes, you want to make LDR 526 strategic planning as a part of your um, as a part of your uh, uh, note taking tonight. Good to see you, Heather. Good to see those that'll be coming on board. If you have a question, just type it in, and we will be more than happy to uh, share that with you. Um, a part of strategic planning in the introduction of this class is to talk to you about decision-making. Decision-making. I'm going to give you about six or seven areas tonight that are strategic in strategic planning to decision-making. And uh, because your decisions are going to increase or decrease your effectiveness. Your decisions are going to increase or decrease your effectiveness. Every decision that you make, every decision that you make has a future. Every decision that you make has a future. So the first area of strategic planning, I want you to write down number one, the word focus, focus. In your strategic planning, you must have a, um, a powerful, uh, non-compromisable focus. You must be focused on the task. You must be focused on the mission. Uh, you must be focused. And so focus is extremely important um, of whether you fail or whether you succeed in your strategic planning. As you focus, you want to focus <clears throat> not just on the immediate, not on the 30-day plan or the 60-day plan, but you want to focus on the long-term plan. Now, focus increases productivity. Focus increases productivity. Um, most people that are in leadership, and that's what this class is, is a leadership camp uh, course, their focus is on survival. How can I survive the last challenge I faced? How can I survive the last problem that I faced? But you're going to have to keep your focus forward. Someone said you can't drive a car by forward looking at the rearview mirror. You've got to stay focused. In fact, the Apostle Paul says, you know, I'm focused. I press forward toward the prize. His focus was in front of him. God gave you two eyes <clears throat> in front of you so that you could keep your focus. So Many times in your life in the area of strategic planning, you will find tremendous distractions. In fact, 98% of your life is a distraction from the center of your focus. 98%, good evening, good evening, Heather, 98% of the your life is a distraction from your focus. So the more pleasure, there's more pleasure in your future than there is in your past. I want to say that again. There's more pleasure in your future than there is in your past. We're talking um, leadership class tonight. We're talking on strategic planning. If you're watching this live or you're watching this later, we're talking strategic planning uh, for this for this uh, for this leadership uh, for this leadership teaching that we're that we're providing for you right now. Glad that you're with us. Glad that you're coming in. And um, I'm Dr. Paul Kreitz, 
teaching this. We have several students, several people that are on board here with us. So um, our first thought in the arena of strategic planning is the arena of focus. You've heard me say this before, what you look at the longest becomes the strongest. So in your strategic planning, whatever you're deciding to look at, if your strategic planning and leadership is for a church and you are strategically focused in on what happens on Sunday morning, as many churches are, that's where your productivity and increase will take place. Unfortunately, the successful churches are focused way beyond Sunday morning. So you've got to decide where your focus will go. Now write this down. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. Dr. Angel, will you write that down on a piece of paper for me? Just write a couple things down tonight. I want to remember that for a book I'm working on. Where your, where your focus goes, your energy flows. Your energy flows. All right, let's talk about the second strategic area of strategic planning. And that is the decision of not just focus, but the decision of time, about respecting your time. God has given all of us the same amount of time. We all have the same amount of time. Let me ask you this question. What do you consider your time worth? What do you consider your time worth? When you become a strategic planner, you're going to have to protect your time like you protect your money. What do you do with your money? You keep a close eye on it. You put it in a wallet, in a purse. You keep it with you. Um, any extra money is going to go into a bank. It's going to go into a safe in your home. It's going to go into a special envelope saved for another activity. You keep an eye on your money. You get your bank statement. You go through the bank statement and you study very effectively where the money came in and where the money went out. That's what CPAs do. I have, I have several of them <laughs> uh, overlooking several of our uh, different ministries and different operations. Well, you're going to have to protect your time like you protect your money. You're going to have to strategically see in strategic planning where your time is going. Now, we created a time chart starting at like 7 in the morning, and we went to 10 or 11 o'clock in the evening. Hello? See, I believe, is it Reba? 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 Uh, Miss Hudson came on. Glad to have you joining us. We're talking leadership class, strategic planning. Um, we're talking about how to be strategic in your planning. Our first subject was the subject of focus. We're now talking about time time, that you're going to have to protect your time like you protect your money. And so you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to educate people. Let me just do a couple things here. There we go. You're going to have to educate others and you're going to have to teach people when you're strategically planning your time of what you will permit and when you will permit it. And you're going to have to announce time frames when setting an appointment. You say, what does that mean? As a leader, you don't just tell someone, I'll meet you at 12 noon. You don't tell somebody, I will meet you at 10 o'clock. You give them a time frame. I have a window from 10 a.m., to 1045. That way, if they show up at 1015, they're not getting a 45-minute meeting. They're getting a 30-minute meeting. You announce time frames. A strategic planner operates within time frames when dealing with people. You're going to have to educate people 
when you're dealing with strategic strategic time frames, uh, this is uh, this is very very valuable. Every you know j j just so valuable. Um, there's a principle regarding time in the Bible. It is called the Jethro principle. You say, well, who is Jethro? <laughs> He's not just a character on the Beverly Hillbillies. No, Jethro was the father-in-law of Moses. And Jethro was standing back watching Moses wear himself out, dealing with everything and not mastering his time correctly. And so Jethro came and introduced some principles. And the major principle that Jethro introduced was delegation. Delegation. How to properly delegate to other people. If you're going to be strategic in your planning and strategic in your time, you're going to have to delegate to other people. You're going to have to learn to delegate to other people. Success is not how many things you accomplish, but the value of the one thing that you do accomplish in the day. We try to hit many things in our time frame, and we'll put out 10 things and maybe hit five or six, and we do the mediocrity with mediocre effort, but we say, I check them off my list, but it's much, much better. It is, it is much, much better to have the strategic planning and say, I'm going to conquer one or two of my top priorities today in this realm of strategic planning. Now, the investment of time, write this down, the investment of time is the proof of respect. The investment of time is the proof of respect. Anyone who teaches, nurtures, corrects you needs to be respected. Anyone who teaches you, mentors you, corrects you needs to be respected because the investment of time is the proof of respect. In the realm of training, which is a missing, missing, missing ingredient in most, in most organizations today, Training is, is really required. It's strategic. You've got to do, you've got to create some incredible training programs. All right, let's look at number three in our, in our discussion of strategic planning. And number three is how to become in strategic in problem solving. How to become strategic in problem solving. The size of the problem that you encounter will determine the size of the reward. The size of the problem that you encounter will determine the size of the reward. It doesn't matter whether you're performing heart surgery or you're cleaning carpets. Never diminish what you're going to do in your current assignment. Both are solving problems. One requires six to eight years of postgraduate studies to become a heart surgeon. Another one requires getting a business license and having a strong back to move furniture and clean carpet. Both have a value. Both have a reward. If you don't want to clean carpets, go back to school, increase your training, and create the ability to solve bigger problems. When you strategically plan as a leader, you want to look around for people that um, know how to connect to someone's problem. Your success is awaiting the discovery of a problem. Your success is awaiting the discovery of a problem. So what is your expertise in problem solving? As a strategic planner, and that's what we're talking about, being strategic in your planning, I want to ask you a question. 
Are you a generalist or are you a specialist? Now, when I see my regular doctor, he's a generalist and he sees everybody. And uh, he says to me, well, we have this problem. Let's try this. Why does he say try it? Because he's practicing medicine. That's what it's called, practicing medicine. He's practicing on me. <laughs> That's what a general doctor does. But when that general doctor finds something that's very concerning, that doctor will send me to a specialist. To a specialist. The specialist, in return, will focus in with all their trouble, with all their training. Will 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 focus in with all of their training. So. As the concept of problem solving here in strategic planning, you don't want to be a generalist because generalists see everybody. Generalists make a certain amount of reward. You want to become a specialist because specialists deal with bigger problems and have greater rewards. Let's move on to number four. Number four in our discussion uh, this evening, number four, uh, let's see, my notes are jumping here around, so let me get down here. I want to talk to you now about being a, 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 a strategist, and I want to tell you something. Are you listening? <laughs> Are you, are you listening? As a leader, you're going to have to deal with people. No surprise there. No surprise there. But as a leader, you're going to be offended. You're going to be offended. People are going to take pot shots at you. People are going to give you their opinion, especially if it's contrary to yours. So one of the key elements to strategic planning is deciding your reactions. I want to write that down. Decide your reactions. Decide your reactions. You decide how far, how long, you decide how far and how long you are going to react to a problem. Now, can I share with you that you, the, you're always wrong about something? <laughs> you didn't need to come on tonight to hear that, did you? You're always wrong about something. It's just a matter of time before you find out. So realize that when other people offend you in their wrong, they just haven't found out. They have just not found out. So, so you're going to have to uh, understand that as a strategic planner, your focus can easily be broken by offenses. So you're going to have to learn what your reaction Right now, I'm dealing with probably three or four things. And one of the reactions I decided was to cut communication. That was my reaction. That was a self-preservation decision. I did not want to give ear to criticalness, negativity. And so my reaction to that was to cut communication. I'll restore it at some point if that person wants to have it restored. Number two, my second reaction that I'm dealing with something right now has been to give this time, and I'm now going on about three months. Now, my feeling is about the same today as it was 90 days ago. 
but I'm giving this some time. My reaction is not to react. My reaction is not to react. I'm giving this some time. I'm giving this some time. So I want you to start setting down and thinking about what your reactions are going to be. By the way, I've decided one reaction regarding, regarding liars. I don't correct them. I don't correct liars. I identify liars. A lot of people lie. So I can't say I'm not going to, I'm not having any relationship with someone who's, who's a liar. I, I would cut out a lot of people out of my life. But I've discovered that it's not, it's not valuable to my strategic planning to try to correct a liar. Eventually a liar will be caught, if not at this level, at this level, or at this level. It's just a matter of time. Your strategic planning regarding how you're going to react is very important. If you can set down some planned reactions, we'll talk more about this in some future classes. Um, number, number five, we want to talk about in strategic planning, a little bit of housekeeping. Purging. What do you need to keep? What do you need to get rid of? Subtraction, you want to write this down. Subtraction, subtraction creates beauty. Subtraction creates safety. Around my home are bushes and trees and they have to be pruned. They have to be cut back or they'll become overgrown and they'll not be pretty at all. But when they're cut back and then the season comes around, they come out very beautiful with new flowers and new plants and new, 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 new greenery. But if I don't keep them trimmed up, they, they will overgrow and it's not safe. It's not safe to have a situation like that walking outside in the dark. Someone could be hiding. Someone could be plotting. Someone could be planning and the, um, lack of subtraction. So you need to subtract some things to remove some things and remove some people in your strategic planning. What in the new year needs to be purged? Remember, when God is removing someone from your life, when God is removing someone from your life, he is beautifying and protecting your life. He is beautifying and protecting your life. So as we talk about strategic planning on this class, a self-inventory is required. You're going to have to work harder on yourself than you work on your job. You're going to have to work harder on yourself. What habits what attitudes, prejudice, goals, what needs to be purged? See, it's not someone telling you what to do more as much as some, someone who really cares about you telling you what you need to purge, what you need to stop. How do you mess a man or a woman up with a goal? You give them two. You give them two goals. And so we're talking about in strategic planning here in this class, this is LDR, Dr. Angel, mm -hmm. Five, two, six. LDR 526, and we've been talking about strategic planning. Uh, we've talked about the different realms, and we're now coming up to um, the last one, number six, decide who you will honor. Could you turn that fan on right above yes, us? I'm so sorry. Could decide who you will honor. Decide who you will honor. It's strategic to create an honor system within your organization. It can be as simplistic as recognizing a member or an employee or a team member each month for outstanding service. It can be, it can be simplistic 
It can be setting aside a certain time to bring honor. Wisdom is recognizing difference, and honor is rewarding difference. Wisdom is recognizing the difference, and honor is awarding, is rewarding the difference. Now, when you begin to really move forward in your strategic planning, it's extremely important that you keep in mind all these things that we've been talking about. I'm going to do a quick review because several students came on about halfway through, and I'm going to do a a, just about a three-minute quick review here with my materials. Number one, just a moment. I'm, ha I'm having the pause that refreshes. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Been a long time since I've had caffeine and sugar in the same drink. But thank you. I said in strategic planning, number one, you've got to decide where your focus will be. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. Focus is very, very important. Focus increases productivity. Focus increases productivity. Now, 98% of your life is a distraction to the center of your assignment or the expertise. So you're going to have to keep an extremely powerful focus. Number two, I told you the second strategic thing you had to work on is time. Respect time. God has given all of us the same amount of time. And you're going to have to protect your time like you protect your money. Which means you're going to have to educate people regarding time you're going to have to educate people regarding time. How do you do that? By setting time appointments this way. When someone says, I'd like to meet with you for 30 minutes, you tell them, let me look at my schedule. I'm available from 9.30 to 10 a.m. This is the beginning and this is the end. Or if someone in general says, I need an appointment, and you say, I've got 30 minutes from 9.30 to 10. If they show up at 9.35, they only have a 25-minute appointment. If they show up at 15 minutes before 10, they only have a 15-minute appointment. You do not extend your time because of their, their lateness. Announce time frames. Announce time frames. Someone says, can you come over tomorrow evening? Let me look at my schedule. I think we can stop by for an hour from 7 to 8 o'clock. Would that, would that be acceptable? Would that be acceptable? Um, learn to respect time. The investment of time is the proof of respect. And so we talked about the Jethro principle and delegation from the life of Moses. Number three, we, did, we talked about in your strategic planning, to be a problem solver, to solve problems, to solve problems. The earth is full of problems. The earth is wall-to-wall -wall problems. Every success is connected to solving a problem. Dentists solve teeth and gum problems. Mechanics solve car problems. Ophthalmologists solve eye problems. You were created as a strategic planner to be a problem solver. There's no need for strategic planning if you're not solving problems. In fact, I will go this far. If you're not solving problems, you're creating them. <laughs> if you're not solving problems, you're creating them. The next area, number four, we talked about strategic planning that as a leader, you're going to be offended. Therefore, you must determine now, right now, your reactions to offense. 
What is going to be your reaction? Is it an immediate? Is it an email? Is it uh, a phone call? Do you give people time to turn around? Because people can make some very dumb mistakes. People can say things that the moment it goes out of their mouth, they wish they didn't say it. They wish they didn't do it. But they did. You've got to be strategic in your reactions. You've got to become strategic in your reactions. By the way, don't make a lifetime opinion on one bad event or experience. <laughs> My wife, at one time, a long, long time ago, her family, her young children, they worked out a deal to be able to go to Disney World. They bought, when they were affordable, season passes. And so they loved, 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 loved going to Disney World. And uh, I think from time to time, we've gone and the girls have gone with their mom. And yet I will see on Facebook where someone went to Disney World one time and they said, oh, it was so terrible. And they've made a lifetime opinion on one bad experience. Going with us is fun, huh? Yeah, they should go with us. <laughs> They, they'd want to go back. People make those kind of decisions about churches. They make those kind of decisions about business. They make those kind of decisions about you. What's your reaction? What's your reaction? Give grace in your reaction. You want to be a strategic leader and give people time enough to turn around. Some need longer. <laughs> Some people need more time than others. All right, number five, I ask you what needs to be subtracted, not added to your strategic planning. What needs to be purged? What needs to be purged? What needs to be removed? Subtraction provides protection. When God removes someone from your life, he's protecting you. When you trim back the trees and the shrubbery and the bushes, you're protecting yourself. You're, you're making beauty because when they come back out, they're going to be more fuller and more pretty and more beautiful. But you're protecting yourself because when a tree or a shrub or a bush overgrows, it makes it easy for someone to hide back there and it becomes unsafe. So, Purging or subtraction creates protection. And then finally, I said number six, who will you honor? Who are you going to honor? It's very important if you're going to be a strategic planner that you as a leader look down the road and say, I found out that this couple are going to be celebrating 40 years. Or, I'm, or this couple are going to be doing this, or this individual is going to be getting their doctorate, or this individual is getting this. And I want to be strategic in being able to plan how to honor them. Well, Dr. Kreitz, I treat everybody the same. No, you don't. That's a silly statement. Oh, yes, I do. I treat... Really? You give your children or grandchildren money for lunch or pack some food for them for an outing and you do that for the entire neighborhood? Well, of course not. Well, you don't treat everybody the same. Your wife, your husband didn't marry you because you were like everyone else. Your wife, your husband married you because you were not like everyone else. You were not like everyone else. Who are you strategically going to honor? All right, that's our class for tonight. It's 7.38, almost 40 minutes past the hour of 7 o'clock. If you have any questions, let's put them online, and we'll be glad to answer any questions you have or any classes, any questions you may have, and then we're going to take a brief break, and I'm going to be back 
teaching on uh, what's my next conflict in the ministry. Conflict in the ministry. <laughs> I'm qualified to teach that. <laughs> Conflict in the ministry coming up here in just a moment for the doctorate program. Any questions tonight? Let us know. Glad that you have joined us. And we're getting ready here to look at your questions. And then we're going to take a short little break. And then we'll be right back for some direction. Dr. Angel, do you have anything you want to say? I, 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 um... I don't. I don't see any questions coming in. I okay. see four people watching. I know uh, Dilton Ellis is one of them. Yes. And uh, Heather and Bruce. Mm -hmm. And I think Reba Carey. No, yep. Yep. That's. She didn't uh, respond to me. Okay. Um, so you know, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Okay, we'll be back in about fifteen minutes, fifteen to twenty minutes at the very most, fifteen to twenty minutes with our next live teaching here from St. Augustine for New Covenant University. And uh, we're going to be talking in the next segment, the next training class on conflict in the ministry. And we'll be right back, taking a break and going off camera, going off the, the air, uh, off internet for just a little while. All right. We'll be back. Simon from India will be back in just a few moments. In about 20 minutes, we're going to be dealing with conflict in ministry. Counseling. She just put her thing up there. Miss Hudson said yes, she's in the Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. We'll be back in about 15 to 20 minutes teaching our doctorate class on conflict in ministry. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs> 